Thank you. <laughs> check, check. Good morning. Um, nice to see so many faces um, so early. Um, <laughs> it's also really early for us in a way. Um, but we also um, already gave a little bit of workshop this morning, so we interrupted it um, for this talk. Um, I'll just start the presentation um, and uh, that. Um, what you see here in this presentation is um, more or less like a combination of a lot of works we did, um, these are collaborations um, with people from Clearly Type, um, from us also work, um, and the combining element um, is of course typography. Um, and our um, goal for this talk is much more to talk about um, um, how, we, how it came to be that we design typefaces, that we work with really type and why we have this focus on typography and rather um, to talk about the specific details of each work. Um, so Adeto will introduce um, really type <clears throat> yeah, I just um, want to say that um, this is just for massaging the eye, basically, and uh, we won't go into anything that's shown here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, just to clear something up, that we're not the founders of Gorilla Type and we're not the owners. Um, we're just here as more or less ambassadors of them, and uh, Thierry and Noel are right now out in California, um, also giving lectures and workshops. And there's somewhere, there's a picture of them somewhere here uh, in the presentation, so if you see them, that's them. Um, and I just want to really quickly ask if uh, the volume is okay. Everybody? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so before we get into um, our history and why we became, why we came, why everything came together and why we're here now, um, I just want to uh, quickly say what we're doing now. So. Um, I'm a graphic and type designer. I live in Bern, Switzerland. I have a little studio there, and um, I do. I don't do too much client work nowadays. I basically I mostly do my own um, projects, and most of them or basically all of them are type related. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I do now. Tom. Um, and I also work as a graphic designer and type designer. I do live in Berlin and have a studio in Basel, so I commute a lot between the two cities. Um, I'm also doing a master in business administration at the moment, so um, something totally design unrelated, which is great sometimes um, to have like a, a balance in your in your life, right? So, how did it actually start, um, or where did this, where do we, where do we start? Um, for me, before I even got to art school, I did an apprenticeship, it's called, in Switzerland. So, you learn on the job, basically. I was working at a printing factory or a printing place, and um, I was taught four years in typography and lithography, and um, my teachers then, they were really strict, so they, they, they said, there's only like, there's a lot of typefaces, okay, but there's a, there's a few, there's only a few good ones that we're going to use, the rest we're going to forget about it. And it's, it was like Garmond, Mignon, and whatever other fruit you could eat. So the rest was really taboo. And uh, I remember I was in, like, it was a, partly working and partly being in school and I, I was in school with a, with a friend of mine and we were both really um, into Wipeout, the video game, the PlayStation game and, um, and he went, he, he came up with this book from the library from the graphic designers who did Wipeout uh, and it was a, a book from the Designers Republic um, and uh, I remember looking at it and I was like, what, what is this, like all these spot colors and like 
they didn't use uh, any of the phones that I was taught to use, and it was um, it was like really this visual porn basically. And I was going through the pages, and it didn't make sense. There was no message. It was just like looking at 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 the, and the pages were just representing, and um, I was so fascinated by that. And then also there was another studio in our city. Um, it's called Beautiful Destruct, and. Um, they had a lot of posters hanging in the, in the streets um, during this time, and they always um, created their own typefaces to do their designs. And I, I, I thought for myself, okay, I, I don't want to stick with this Helvetic uh, or like uh, Univer and Fruitiger stuff. I want to do my own kind of like uh, design work and start something for myself. And I. Um, started to do these uh, blocky um, illustrator based uh, grid kind of fun things um, to come up with designs that I would print on t-shirts and I was having a lot of fun printing t-shirts and um, yeah that was kind of like how it started for me basically. Yeah I um, on the other hand didn't have a, like a strict um, uh, education I went to, to college and got into rapping with a few friends and with that of course came graffiti and um, I did, it's like the classic graphic designer training to do graffiti and um, after that I realized like okay I'm much more interested in, in drawing letter um, forms than actually the, the, um, the process of spraying and I got interested in doing um, the study in visual communications and met um, a later because we have um, his girlfriend um, went to college with me. So um, that's when it clicked in a way because we both had this, this um, eye and this interest for, for um, typefaces and we actually then spent until um, we started with um, university, like talking till four in the morning in a bar in Bern um, about typefaces and have you seen that and this and, and whatever. And then we started university, of course. <laughs> so um, we got into uh, art school and um, for me it was really like uh, chains coming off because then for one, all of a sudden like everything was allowed. Of, like nobody told me to use do this and this and use this and this. So um, I was really like, ah, oh, there's this universe, and I want to kind of dive into it and and use every font and look at it. And so we um, then had this first like yeah, that's, that's basically like we had this first project then in in Tupo Club. Yeah, um, it was we had to do a, um, a matrix font, which is on a really strict grid and and um, really really quickly we decided for us it's not really interesting to be limited by this grid, and so we started to work on a on a um, optical. Um, typeface already which um, also led to like discussions inside our class because our um, our colleagues weren't really happy that we um, went another way again because we usually usually just spent hours and hours and hours in school playing ego shooters and um, and um, like trying to design typefaces and do everything um, different than, than our our um, our colleagues, which maybe was a little bit too much sometimes, but yeah. So there came actually like the first typeface we worked on, and it's um, it's too bad Dato didn't find the font files of his. I had mine, but um, it's um, too bad it's not uh, integrated in in the presentation because that's something that, which is really interesting. And Christian Schwartz from um, Commercial Park, for example, on his personal homepage also displays the, um, it's the one who did graphic, the font. Um, he also displays this, um, his first fonts, which is really nice to see that um, you start somewhere and end up somewhere else, but the first steps always look like quite shitty. <laughs> And maybe some very important factor also to say is that um, at our art school we're able to 
be there 24-7, like the building was open to us, so we didn't need to leave or like to, to leave at a certain time in the evening, and that led us to be there all the time, basically, um, and just hang out and yeah, play video games and, and uh, talk about type. So after two years, um, we decided that we had a bit enough of uh, art school and we don't want to go out and do um, internships. So we both kind of stopped, <coughs> stopped for a year and uh, I went to Barcelona and then also to Berlin to intern. Um, I'm not going to go into the first one, but the second one was with uh, Timo Gessner from uh, Media Grotesque now. And uh, I had a really good um, time with him and we I learned a lot from him and we talked a lot about type and it was really like on a on the same level with him to be like uh, in his studio, it was just the two of us. So that was a very, very influential time for me. Yeah, and I went to Paris um, for half a year and after that I went to Geneva to um, Optimo and Gabriel Rus, they run Optimo. And also for me it was, was really fascinating um, to um, Gabriel Rust um, had uh, uh, and still have a really great attitude towards design. Um, they're really strict in the way they design things and also typefaces and have an incredible um, good eye for details which then also like formed my, my um, sense of how I approach type. And yeah, after that we I came back um, to university, uh, which was a little bit of a bummer because we really enjoyed working, actually working, and not to do um, those assignments that usually end up in some drawer. Um, and yeah, we then, so yeah, um, we came back and um, we were also a bit let down by our school because um, at that point we were so interested in type design and we wanted to like get more knowledge and have um, somebody to teach us and uh, there was basically nobody there at our school so and um, we met that was the year when we met um, Thierry and Noel and we decided for ourselves to maybe build this self-helping group because we we're also interested in we wanted to share our ideas but um, nobody could help us, so we thought we'd, we'd, we'd help ourselves. And uh, we would meet up like every Friday afternoon and uh, lay out our, our designs and then talk about it and like go really crazy and we're, we're not so nice to each other, so sometimes uh, <laughs> uh, it was a bit harsh. But um, yet yeah, I, I remember it being a very inspirational time, like um, discussing all these, this design work and kind of like helping each other out with uh, ideas and concepts. And then also um, for like the history of Grilly Type, Grilly Type actually somehow grew out of this self-help group. Um, Thierry and Noel um, then had this one project they had, had to do for, for university um, where they wanted to do, I, I don't remember what it was actually, but then, um, it got rejected, so so um, Thierry was like, okay, I'll just do a type foundry, and we'll try to to sell those um, typefaces we we do um, for like a little bit cheaper than than the average because it's um, student funds. Um, and he and Noel got together and started started this um, like really crappy website, and um, and I. I think it cost twenty dollars a font still, but it's compared to Line Two or Linotype or something. It's still really affordable. And yeah, then after that, um, it somehow took off. And um, <clears throat> Toby and I um, then graduated from from art school, and our um, final project was. Um, uh, how do you say, a communication um, for blind? Yeah, the idea was we had um, this bachelor thesis we had to write and um, 
We also had the idea to do like something in between um, exhibition type and um, foundry, the type foundry. Also this, yeah, this project for the uh, bachelor thesis got also rejected um, by our school, so uh, we were a little bit bummed out and, and thought about okay, then what what do we do now? Um, we then met a friend of mine who, who talked about. Um, that he's training with his dog for blind people and uh, we were like, okay, um, what does that mean? What does visual communication mean for blind people actually? And then we uh, wrote the um, theoretical thesis about the, the topic of how um, communication for, for blind and visually impaired people works. Um, and after that we developed um, our actual bachelor thesis which became more uh, um, a communication concept aimed at um, people who, who um, can see without impairment um, and that that communicates the difficulty um, for, for blind people and in, in um, in the process of that, we started to work on a typeface which uh, we tried to uh, make as legible um, as possible um, if you read it by touch. So that's where GT Haptic um, got born, um, like our first proper um, daily type font. And it has some real strange quirks in it. You see it in the uppercase R, or um, like in um, the G, for example, uppercase. All the uppercase letters aren't optically corrected because it's not necessary if you touch them. Um, you don't need the overshoot. Um, and yeah, we then also did like posters which were really tactile. Um, uh, we did a flyer out of silicone, which was really wobbly, and um, uh, you could touch the type on it. And there's also a picture somewhere in the presentation. And um, we graduated, graduated with that, and um, then got the opportunity. But you also have to say that uh, the project wasn't really um, well received. Um, our uh, teachers and tutors didn't really like it. And um, we barely passed, so. Uh, but we <laughs> we got out like of art school, and we thought, okay, um, we have this typeface. Uh, what do we want to do with it? And um, we asked Thierry and Noel basically if they were interested in releasing it. And um, it was basically yeah, it was the first the first uh, release they actually had on grid type. So yeah. Yeah. Balsam was first. Oh, really? Yeah, Balsam was, was the first typeface and then I think was GT Haptic. Um, but we then um, got the opportunity to work at the um, university where we studied, um, which was also great. We did the whole communication of, of, the, um, of the art school. Um, we had a great um, boss, um, the, um, Marion was our boss um, and she was like the head of uh, marketing for the university and she gave us quite um, a, a lot of freedom, yeah, and um, we, we then designed um, like uh, with ASD which came out last year, yeah, GTSD. Um, for example, this poster there, How to Better Faster Stronger, it was for the um, information campaign of the University of the Arts, and there were also, it was well, um, quotes from pop songs. So um, one said, um, Get rich or die trying um, for, for the arts school. <laughs> um, I just, ah, here it is. Um, and it was just funny because. Um, our art school not only has um, visual communication, but also classical music or um, media art and um, the restoration. And um, 
classical music, they were, weren't pleased at all, but um, our boss defended us against like the whole backlash of the of the of the school and we had like the first proper um, application of, of um, ASD. Yeah. So um, by that time our basic method of designing has already kind of sunk in that we would uh, work on our typefaces and then incorporate them in projects that we were doing and the better uh, it was a uh, uh, for us it was a really real pleasure to work at the school because we had so much freedom and we could just um, work on typefaces and then use them in actual projects that get printed and um, so that was really like for, for us the, the way of working to come up with like look at the project, come up with an idea for a typeface, um, draw draw the letters and get it done and then um, get to design work. It was like um, means of it was the typeface was the means of, of designing. And um, so. yeah I, I think I think that's that's what we do now um, and what Grady type also is about. Um, we don't try to <coughs> Um, concentrate on, on the typeface itself. Of course, we concentrate on the typeface itself, but then it's it's a means of of working. We see it as a tool. If um, we both now um, uh, work independently, um, still collaborate on on um, numerous occasions, um, but we try to incorporate our way of of doing type more. As, as the tool to, to um, shape the message we want to send out, not to um, have like uh, a perfect um, copy of a Renaissance, Antiqua, whatever, that, that's something we, we're not really interested in, but rather to see it as, as part of the complete design process. So that's why we always say we're designers and type design. So the design comes first and then um, more um, our attitude towards um, type design. So, And I'm really, really convinced that working from this macro um, level towards the actual goal of the project that it really um, gives you the complete control over the look of your design and it really um, um, kind of when it comes together in the end it makes sense like to have have done this step from a working on a node and a, and a handle and just kind of like fixing the proportions towards then designing with your own tool to give it like the the, the look and the, and then to print it in the end and have it in your hand so it's really working from the basis up to the end and yeah and yeah we, we also have to say we're all um, self-taught. Um, no one um, of any type um, ever attended um, um, type design courses, <laughs> so <laughs> we have no idea what we do. <laughs> um, but I think that's also like the, the good thing. Um, at the moment, um, clearly type has seven typefaces in their program. Um, uh, we. You, I think most of you have also seen all those um, websites um, that get published, which are most of the time um, coded uh, by Thierry, for example. Um, Noel does a lot of, of the whole design um, around it when it comes to like um, the specimens and stuff. Um, and we still, although we're um, in so many different cities, we still discuss um, over Slack, Skype, whatever, the, um, really hard um, our, our um, like drawings. Um, I'm at the moment in the process of finishing um, GT Silicon, um, which will hopefully someday come out. Um, Reto is also working on a typeface called, um, I think the working title is GT Alpina, which is um, his first serif font, um, which will come, come out. Um, 
Then there's Moade, um, the, the studio from Zurich, who did Presura. They are working on a typeface. Um, you can see it um, also on Instagram, of course. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's about it from Grill Type. Mm -hmm. And so maybe for the end of our talk, to kind of conclude all of this, um, it was very important for us to always kind of like have this work together and share our ideas. So a, a group effort is, is like in my opinion always stronger than your own effort. Um, even though we're all very, like we've all very separate ideas and different mindsets sometimes, sometimes it's, 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 it's still interesting to hear what, what um, other people like our group's view is on my, my design work or my project. So the group effort and the team work is always very important. And also for me it's very important that type or type design is not for in itself a, a discipline. It's also for me it's just a means of doing design work. So applic a, an application of my font or my typeface is a very important part of the process. Otherwise, just doing a typeface and um, throwing it out there, it's not, it doesn't um, make sense to me. It's really important for me to use it myself and be my own critic to like the harsh, maybe the harshest critic to my own work um, and then see how it, how it works for myself first instead of uh, just doing something random, like not random, but doing something, drawing, coming up with a design and then trying to, to put that out there. It's really for me a means of, of designing, um, doing design work. Yes. No, I think that's, that sums it up. Um, <laughs> no, but um, what I um, wanted to say in the beginning, no, I uh, put it at the end. Um, I think, I, or we thank um, Torino Graphic Days. Um, it's incredible to be here. They're incredibly um, generous and nice and um, yeah, and we enjoy enjoy those days here very much. Although we we didn't see it as much from the city, but um, like the, the whole festival is really incredible and really good job. Thank you very much. Thank you.